Okay, so those cameras are started. And where's our actual speed? Our speed is right here. That's our... I'm going to go through the whole rundown okay. with you. That's the airspeed indicator. The, I'm going to show you the, the three that we're going to use for flight training, especially the initial stages. Number one, I'd say most important is right there. Number two is this guy right here, your altimeter. altimeter. And number three is this turn and slip indicator. These other ones are just fancy. They're nice to have. You're spoiled. Most aircraft, they don't even have them. So this is really just a compass and part of the um, autopilot system. This one will tell us the rate in which we're climbing, climbing. and descending. Right. And then this gives you an idea of your degree of, yeah, degree of a angle of attack. Right. So they're just fancy gauges, but the key is this one, this one, and that one. So right here we're lined up on this runway nice and straight, I'm just making sure. Okay, my flaps are on 15 degree notch. Good. That, that's 15? That's 15 right there, okay. yep. Everything's good to go. I'm secure, you're secure? Yep. So if you're ready to do this, let's do this. Okay. And Edaville traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankee on the roll 3-1. What I'm doing is I'm just applying full power, usually within about four seconds. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Yeah, we're at full, full power. I'm steering the plane with my feet right, right now. That's all I'm doing. Gradually pulling my nose up, and we're off the ground. Oh, wow, that was fast. Now it's gonna get a little bit choppy, because it's a sunny day today. But right now I'm trying to climb this plane at the speed of 60, 60 to 65. Kicked around a little bit by some thermal activity. So what we're feeling, this knocking around, is completely normal. That's just turbulence. You fly early in the morning, you don't get it, or late in the evening, you won't get it. Don't need those anymore. We safely cleared the ground. That's 1,300, 13, uh, yeah. Now that's 1,300 feet above, above sea, sea level. level. Yeah. So once we cross the seven mark there, we're in theory about 1,000 feet over the ground. Oh. Yeah, that's, that was a good one. Approaching altitude. Got to see some summer days how they get to fly. Woo -hoo. Whoa. But that's, that's why we train, right? To, to get those nerves out of us. I'm trying to climb Ooh, higher to avoid that air. Notice how it got right. really still right here? Yes. So we're kind of escaping that thermal activity coming up. I'll keep bringing it up just to make sure we don't get any of those surprises. It's nice and smooth up here. I'll level it off at 2,500 feet. And notice what I'm doing. I'm still on full power right now. Yes, I noticed I'm that. I'm keeping just an aggressive little pullback on that stick. Here comes my 2,500. I'm going to let the nose droop. I'm going to let it level off. I'm going to let the airspeed build now. Now I'm going to oh. ease back. Oh. 47. Yeah. Exactly. Like even when it's this smooth, we can be at 5,000. It, it depends on the s how smooth the air is. If it was really rough like it was down there, we might be 47, 4,600 RPMs. I got that little blue indicator here, which makes it extra cool for training. See that little blue? Yes, plug? where the five is? Yep. I can set that anywhere at any given time. That way I don't have to be on your butt about telling you, hey, get to that altitude. You can always just look for that little cheat and find where I set it. So I set it to 2,500 feet. Right now I'm a little bit high. Okay, okay Bill, I don't understand. Okay, oh, There's sure. that little blue thing down there yep. on the si two sides. Of yep. The I'll, I'll, the 172, I'll show you how it works. Charlie. If I turn this knob, it goes to 2,400 feet. Oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. 
2,300 feet. But right. I just set it for 2,500 so to keep me honest. So it's a quick reference. When I look down there, okay. I want to see the needle roughly on that blue. That way it keeps me at the 2,500 feet. We don't have to be at this height, but it's good to pick one and announce right. to the world where we are so nobody flies at our same altitude, right. same area. Romeo Uniform taking up runway they one. So we're listening to Collingwood traffic right now. That's the airport that's sort of off our left wing there. Straight down this long road, you'll see a green grassy field there. Okay. It's yeah. tough to see, but there is an airport there, and that's Collingwood, which is very busy. And off on our right side here, sort of at one o'clock, there's Midland, but that's far off in the distance. So a lot of people travel this coastline between okay. these two busy airports. So that's why I'm really keeping a watchful eye if there's anybody out and about flying around this area. I'm not seeing anyone here. No. Yeah. So let's pick a di what direction do you want to do this lesson? Do you want to go that way or do you want to go this way or do you want to go towards Barry? Wh whatever you'd like. Uh, we can go towards Barry. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you ride through this turn with me. Put your left hand on that stick right. and I want you to feel how easy this aircraft moves. So I'm just going to do a gentle right turn just by a little pull on that stick. That's all it took. Notice the plane's going to keep rolling until I pull back a little bit the other direction. So we'll keep going and letting this roll continue. Okay. We're holding altitude pretty good. So Barry's going to be off in the direction where that ski resort is. That's Snow Valley. Good. I think you're doing this, aren't you? I'm not doing anything, so... Yeah. So I want you to really feel this stick. I could tell you already kind of got a feeling of what's going on in the aircraft with the stick control. So feel free to move that stick around a little bit and play with it. Altitude. I'm going to be close by, so I'm not going to let you do anything to get okay. us in trouble. Now, do you have to apply left rudder while you're doing a, a, a turn? Sometimes, yes. I'll show you what we're going to look for. We're going to look at the ball. The ball is right there. Okay. Now, this aircraft, the Sportstar, is extremely forgiving for the tail and the rudder. So, this, uh, some planes you'll hear the term, oh, it's rudder heavy. Right. This is rudder super light. Okay. Means we barely need rudder to correct this aircraft. Okay. It loves to fly. So, what ideally we want to do is keep the ball remotely in the center while we're doing turns. That just shows that we are in coordinated flight. If the ball is hanging off, say, the left side, yes. that means our tail is going like this, slipping that way. If it's hanging the right way, it's going this way. So we do that by using the rudder to fix that. So right now we're, we're pretty coordinated, we don't need to do anything. Now I'm, I notice I'm, I'm climbing. Yep, you are. Okay, so to combat that... So you, so you said you wanted to see a 2500, right? It, it's okay if you climb, we can do whatever we want here, because eventually that's going to be one exercise you're going to have to master, is straight and level flight without climbing or descending. But like I said, today is to have fun and let you feel the aircraft. So I'm just going to make sure we don't hit anything. Right. That's a, that's a good thing. Other than that, let's do or go wherever okay. you want, play with the plane, I want you to feel it. So if you look at that ball there, oh, traffic warrior golf course, actually. that means all you need to do is apply a little bit of your left foot to straighten it. There you go. Oh, okay. So the word we use in flight training is step on the ball. Step on the ball. If the ball's left, step on it with your left foot. Gotcha. Where it gets very confusing is when you're flying in a very turbulent, rough day, and the plane feels like it's going straight, but it's not, and sometimes it'll trick your brain, and you always have to remember that rule, step on the ball. Step on the ball. Because you might be feeling a totally different sensation and right. telling you to use the other foot. But the ball's not going to lie. Approaching altitude.
How's it feeling so far? Yeah, very good. Very comfortable. Good. Very, very sensitive, obviously. Yeah. So that's a little bit of turbulence coming in. And I think the reason why is the grade of the land is starting to creep up below us here. Higher sea level. So we can either combat that with just learning how to fly in it and stay okay. at this altitude or climbing up to try to avoid the thermals. Oh, want to go up higher? If you, if you want, you can. Sure. Cool. Leaving altitude. Maybe 2,700 feet might be good. Okay. Nobody up here. No, not a soul. Actually quite nice when it's yeah. like this. So what I was going to show you, the first thing we usually do in an aircraft, once we climb off the runway, get to our desired altitude and level our nose, the first thing a pilot wants to do is generally set the trim of the aircraft. Because every time you take off and land, it's going to change based on your weight, stuff you put in the back, right. all that kind of stuff, and uh, thickness of the air, density of the air. So the way we're going to do that is just kind of move your hand away from the stick, and we're going to see if the plane climbs or descends. That's actually trimmed perfectly. Because yeah. if it was trimmed wrong, you would see that needle, it's almost pointing down a little bit, but you're not going to get it any better than that with using this trim button. Right. The increments are too large, and they'll just make it so you have to always push on the stick. Yeah, sometimes, most planes, like, uh, most planes will have a mechanical lever for the trip. It'll be down here, a little lever, or right here. And, uh, if you have it set wrong, it'll make your day miserable. Big metropolis of Barry. That's Kempenfeld Bay in there. That it is, sir. Still has some ice, I see. It does. Surprised. Yeah. Must be that super deep water keeps it cold. Yeah. But the rest of the lake looks melted. It's still pretty clear up. No, I don't. I don't see anyone up. Nope. I don't hear anyone. Yeah, Nothing. I switch over to Barry's frequency, but I can almost guarantee we're not going to hear anybody in Barry flying. And so, where, where, where was Edenvale now? Edenvale no, is going to be off in that direction. Off to your left there at 11 o'clock, you will see Lake Simcoe Regional uh, Airport. Uh, Very large landing strip, off to the distance about eight miles that direction. Going down. Traffic off uniform, Charlie, is overhead to the field right now. We'll be doing that turnaround to go to the field downward. So you said 11 o'clock right yep. there? Yep. You see it off in the yes. distance? Yes, traffic just off. Uh, before the water. Before the water, yeah. Altitude. Charlie Tango 2, land check set, uh, climbing through 1500, we'll do a slightly early uh, left turn out in that case, it's uh, westbound Southampton. So what we're being hit by is hot pockets of air. Do we go up higher? Altitude. We can, but we also got to learn how to fly in it. Okay. So, sure. This is not bad. In the summer, it can get pretty ignorant. Right. So, you want to ideally fly morning or, or evenings. Mid day, that's for the really brave. Okay. <laughs> and we got shit right there now, no comment. If I wasn't an instructor, I wouldn't be flying it. Hey. Yeah, if you want to go for a leisure flight for a pancake breakfast, leave at 6 a.m. <laughs> and you, you, don't, you want to be eating your breakfast at noon. <laughs> Okay, 
It is windy up here too. I can feel that we got some good wind pushing us. Okay. I can just see how quick the stuff is moving below us and uh, we're moving pretty fast. And Owen Town traffic, Gulf Mountain from Charlie is joining, joining the midfield downwind runway 26 Owen Town. My airspeed is 77 knots, 78 knots. Yep. That is That's the speed that the air is moving over your wings. Okay. But our ground speed is very different because we're being pushed by the wind. So right now we're moving at 101 knots, 102. Okay. That's ground speed for the GS yeah, there. Yep. And the TAS? Uh, we're not even going to get into that. Okay. If you want to fly over towards your place, feel free. You'd be that way, right? Yes, I am. Bell Ewart, right? Yep. Bell Ewart. Okay. So everything you're feeling right now is completely <laughs> normal, unfortunately. The turbulence. Yep. It'll tend to calm down as we fly over the water because the water That's absorbs cold. the sun. Yep. Leaving altitude. You could always just imagine the sun is like uh, almost like laser beams. Altitude. And if they hit, the harder the surface, the stronger they bounce back up causing it to heat the air really quickly, thus causing these hot air bubbles, almost like a jacuzzi with the bubbles coming up. You know, it's just like that, if you envision it that way. And, but when that sun hits that water, it kind of gets distorted and sucked in, and the energy sucked out of it. How's it feeling so far on that stick? Pretty good. Nice. Yeah. So you boat through Simcoe? I beg your pardon? You, you do your boating in Simcoe? I do. Very yes. nice. Yeah, I have a place in the Narrows on the north end of Simcoe. Oh. Oh. There's that big development there, Friday Harbor. Yes. There was a fire there uh, uh, yeah. back about three months ago. Yep. Oh. Now, when you took Patrick up, was that, and, and it's on the YouTube, was that his first flight with you? Um, that would be his second with his, me. His second with okay. The first one, yeah, he took the footage. That's back when I only had one camera. Okay. And he took the footage and brought it back to Germany. I think it's on his YouTube channel. Okay, here's an aircraft right above us here. I see that. But we see him, and he's not diving, so we're okay. okay. I think he just saw us now. Bit of a wing tip. Wow, this area is really changing, huh? Oh yeah, the developments that are coming in here. Look at that, it's yes. all new. Yeah. All Innisville. Oh, yeah. 
Used to like it being a little sleepy cottage town. Oh. It's changed quite a bit. Unbelievable. Nice hobby. Watertown FBO. Nice hobby, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Just wish I would have taken it up years earlier. Ah, uh, you know what? It's. Well, I'd like to say it's never too late until you know somebody's situation, right? But of course. for the most part, it's never too late. People think they're a little. getting a little long in the tooth for it, but they'd, you'd yeah. be surprised. Yeah. So my cottage is straight down there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Keep your boat right off the off your cottage, or are you at the marina? Uh, I'm at the marina. Pastor's already there. That's uh, 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 Lake Simcoe Marine, yep. Monterino, and Lafroy Harbor. Okay, yeah. So. Notice that we've really slowed down quite a bit. Yeah, because your nose is up. up. Push your nose forward right. and you'll pick up speed. That's what I was just going to start discussing with you. Okay, so now we're going to get back into lessons. So let's, let's do this at 2,500, let's say. We're at 2,500 feet, give or take. We're flying along, just making sure there's no skydiving going on today. The little airport right up here, they do skydive. Hard to see. It's a grass field. I, I can't see it. No, it's it's still tough to see. It's maybe three miles at our 11, 11 o'clock, eleven thirty. But we don't. I don't hear them on the radio. I'm on their frequency. Okay. Okay. So let's start talking about uh, flight training again. Okay. So to fly an aircraft, the main thing we need is air speed. We need to be moving through the air enough to cut the, the air molecules across the wing enough to create lift by the, by the wing, obviously, right? So, this aircraft, the safety margin in this thing is it's not supposed to stall until it hits 38 knots. Right. And the term stall has nothing to do with the engine. It has to do with we no longer have enough air molecules going over the wing to produce lift. So, therefore, it falls. It'll just straight fall. Like no matter what direction the wing is in, it will you mean fall. like drop? It will drop. Drop. Yeah. Yeah, we've just lost all lift when that happens. Right. Now, we're not going to bring the plane into that condition until you're more advanced and pretty much ready to solo. Okay. That we're going to do stalls with an aircraft. 
And even then we go to a higher altitude to do them, so we have plenty of time to recover from it. Of course. This is too low for that. Uh, now, if you notice on the airspeed indicator, there's what we call the white arc. See, yep. it starts there at 38 yes. knots, and it goes to 70. Yes. The white arc is the indicator of where you can safely use your flaps. Right. So right now, that is telling us you cannot pull the flap lever. Correct. You can, but it'll damage, it could damage the wings of the plane, right. could damage the air structure of the actual plane, and we can be in a lot of trouble. Right. Best case scenario, you just rip the flaps off and you still fly the aircraft. But we don't want to ever deploy flaps when that needle is not right. in that white arc. To safely keep this air, this airplane aloft, I always like to say 65 and you're alive. Right. So right now where you're at 80, you're yes. going to fly no problem. Right. Once you start getting below 65, then we're in danger of getting to a stall relatively quick because our airspeed is going much slower. So whenever you start climbing an aircraft, obviously you're going to start sucking energy out of out of your forward motion. Right. Therefore, your airspeed is affected. So It'll the slow down. Exactly. The right. more you pull back on that stick, no different than a car, really. Right. You got to go up a big hill. You got to put your foot on that gas pedal. Right. Now, the art of being a good pilot is how to do that balance so nice. It's a, it's imagine you're a limo driver and there's people in the back with uh, you know, champagne going and you yes. don't want them to spill the champagne. So they, you never want them to feel you touch that gas pedal. Right. And ideally, a good pilot will get to that stage Even where you're going to pull back on the stick and apply power at the same time. Okay. And vice versa, when you want to start coming down, you're going to pull back, pull forward on the stick yes. and reduce your power. Right. And the more we practice, the better, obviously, you get with it. Now, to try that exercise, just watch, without me touching the throttle, just pull back on that stick to climb up to towards 3,000 feet and watch how quickly this aircraft's going to start slowing down. Yes. And it's going to get fat, like the slowing down speed will get faster and faster because we're aggravating it by right. climbing harder and harder. Now to speed up, all we have to do is push forward. Right. So another thing that most instructors will teach, your speed is controlled by your stick. stick. Yeah, and your altitude is controlled by your throttle. And that will get most people out of almost all fatal accidents if they just remember that. Stick, stick is speed. Yep. Altitude is your throttle. So if we want to come down, yes, we can go down like this, but your airspeed is going to go so damn fast right. that the plane is going to start vibrating itself apart on the way down. Right. But if we want to really come down properly, we just reduce this throttle to nothing and keep your airspeed in a safe area. So I'm going to show you how we do that. Okay. Now this throttle is called a vernier controller. That means it operates two ways. You can either do a fast motion on this throttle by pushing in right here where there's a spring-loaded button. I push and squeeze, then right. I can pull the stick forward and backward, similar to a lever on a snowblower. Right. Or we can micro-adjust by using this like a big stereo volume dial. Got it. This way your volume up, speed up, engine speed up, engine speed down when you turn it to the left. Right. Now the majority of flying that I do with this aircraft is always just with the dial. You don't need to do those slamming crazy stuff unless you're taking off, uh, avoiding something. Right. Like the odds of use having to use that, it's just unnecessary work for your shoulder and arms. And it's inaccurate when you're playing with that. This is so accurate when you just turn that knob. So I want right. you to feel it. Yep. Okay. Now have a look at this right here. That is your, your RPMs. 40, almost at 4900. Yep. If you want to bring it back, unwind it like a like a volume dial. Just turn to the left, counterclockwise. There you go. There's a big bird directly in front of us. Let's do a left turn. I don't know if you see them there. Oh yes. Yeah. Flock, not a school. There we go. Ah, those are the geese. Very nice. 
And conversely, if you want to try to throttle up, turn that thing to the right. You'll see how many turns you'll need to get it to, say, 5,000. 5,000 right there. I want to slow it down. Yeah. And on stop traffic, Romeo Sierra Sierra, clearing the zone to the southwest, uh, currently, currently over the city of Owen Sound. Southwest bound in the climb, passing 2008 on the way to 4005. Conflict to Romeo Sierra Sierra for Owen Sound. That's a good one. Oh. Ooh. Oh, wake you up. Certainly did. Now you're saying we normally want to fly around 4,700 RPM. 4,700, I find, gives a decent amount of safety margin. It keeps you nice and fast, but not too fast. Right. And obviously, the rougher the air gets, the slower we're going to have to bring our RPMs and our airspeed. Okay. So if, the, if it's really beating the heck out of us with thermals, we might want to slow her down to, yeah, in the 70s. Airborne off of runway 27, going through uh, 1,800 feet. And in the climb for 65 on route to VR. Very, very smooth air. You could bring this thing up to even, if you really wanted to, you could do uh, like 5,400 RPM, 5,500 RPM. But it's very rare that I've ever flown the plane in that area. In terms of the the speed. Yeah, right. exactly. Yes. Speed, uh, the speed of the engine. Or the correct. Product. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it'll increase your airspeed, of course. Right. right? Approaching altitude. And so where's the airport again? What do you think? Uh, it's got to be to around 11 o'clock. No, wait a second. Leaving altitude. I'll give you a hint. Right there is baseboard, which we're going to have to turn altitude. away from over okay. here, like in that distance. So we're, let's do a right turn this way. Okay. Over there is Georgian Bay yes. in front of us. So Collingwood, I mean, Collingwood is over there with Blue Mountain. You can see the white on there. Right. So we got Blue Mountain and you got Wasega Beach. So we're pretty much flying directly exactly. towards the airport now. Now you'll notice, since our RPM is at the 4400 mark, notice how your stick is getting sloppy? Yes. You're finding a lot of turning. So just add a little bit more power. That's how you'll know where I, where I tell you that 4600 feels right. much nicer on the stick. It's just hard to maintain altitude when you're below that 4600 feet. You'll find that the plane will be always nose up to try to maintain. It's still very hard to see the airport unless you know what it looks like from up here. I'm so used to this area, I know right. where it is, but... What's that huge... Looks like a, it looks like that patch right there. That's where the high tension lines run up to feed northern Ontario. Is that what? Okay. Yeah. Like a big scar in the earth, all the trees chopped down all the way up. Yes. This area here is what we call the Minasing Swamp. So if we were up here with other pilots and people flying around, that's a, a reporting area. We'd tell people we're just above the menacing swamp. swamp. But eventually you're going to have to learn all these little landmarks in the area. Of course. 
And would you say this flight, the, the turbulence that we've been having would be typical or? This is typical for a clear sky. Okay. So look up right now, you don't see any okay. clouds. Right. So this is typical. Right. I prefer to fly in a day with some cloud because then you don't get this nonsense. Right. A little smoother right now. Yep. And it's because we have trees and water. Right. It's like a marsh. Gotcha. So it's absorbing all that energy. Gotcha. And once we pop out the other side, it's going to whack us around again. How are you feeling? Good. Okay, no oh, queasy yeah. stomach or anything? No. Good. I'm good. I'm all good. There was a little moment when we were first taking off. It was a little yep. iffy, iffy for me there, so okay. So the runway we took off on is 3-1. Yep. And so that's the indication that we should be lining up with the airman. Almost, almost, yeah. Oh. You'd have to turn, yeah. That's 305 degrees? Correct. Okay. Oh, nice and smooth here. Very smooth. Yeah. And so I'm still looking for the runway. Okay. And there it is. You got it. That's the thing too. As long as you know a general area where to fly, right, and you get as you get closer, you're going to see it. Yeah. for the thermal activity, I'd say what a beautiful day. Yeah. And so we took off on 3-1. Yep. So that's basically the general direction that we're going right now. That's right. All right. Yeah, we took off on that runway okay. and we'll most likely we'll be landing oh. on the same one. Now, of course, there's an entire procedure we need to do to do that. Right. We have to fly towards the airport in a certain manner, but we're not there yet. We okay. still have time. Okay. And we have to do what we call an entry to the circuit. Right. You can do it either downwind, downwind, for, at a 45 degree off, off of the downwind, or? Um, the Americans teach that, the 45 degree entry. Okay. Uh, here it's frowned upon. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, well, we can... We're supposed to enter in far into the uh, downwind. So if, do you understand what the circuit looks like already? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you understand the downwind is going to be coming this, this way. way. Now imagine the downwind being at least double the length of that runway past it. So okay. it starts maybe another 4,000 feet in that direction. In Canada, we should be entering way, come way up here, and then enter straight in 4,000 feet past, and then enter straight into the downwind. Right. In the in the states, they would come in a little bit more, maybe another minute this direction, cut straight towards the airport, and then turn the plane 45 degrees in, and then enter into the downwind. Okay. The reason why we don't do that is there could be already somebody coming straight in, and okay. we're doing the 45, and we can collide. Right. So they recommend that we come all the way up around. and around, around and enter. It's, I wouldn't call the 45 entry wrong. If it was a busy day at the airport, you wouldn't want to mess around with that stuff. You would want to come For way sure. out here so you can see everybody enter straight in. Right. Yeah, it's so smooth over here. Right.
Well, you have great control of this thing. I haven't been on the stick at all. What altitude do you want us to be at before we hit the downwind? To do that, we have to be exactly a thousand feet above the ground. So we're going to have to be at 1,700 feet. Yeah. 1,700 feet. Okay. So I'm getting ready. Yep. Yeah, we still got 15 minutes though, so. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the station so we can listen to Collingwood so we don't have any close calls with those guys. You can see straight in front of us here, sort of at like a 12:30 direction. Yes. We're looking straight down runway 31 at Collingwood. Collingwood. Oh, that's Collingwood right there. Yep. Oh, oh, yes. A okay. little wide patch. So would you like me to come around and come this way? Um, we could even go back towards the shore. Like it, it doesn't matter wherever wherever okay. you want to go. The only thing we can't do is fly over baseboard. And where where exactly is baseboard? It would be. Uh, like three o'clock? Uh, nine o'clock? Further back. No, it's like seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Okay. Well, we'll uh, do a left turn out. Back here? En route to uh, Kitchener, Waterloo. This is India, Delta Bravo, Julius. So there will be a guy taking off, off from there and right. then turning left towards Actually, Kitchener, Waterloo. Yeah. So we right. just don't want to get in right. his flight path. Okay. But anything on this side, I just think we should go towards the water sure. there. And Lima, all capital Lima Bravo Alpha is a final 31 for the stop and go runway 31 Collingwood. So we're still far, far enough away. We're way out of their circuit from here. Right. Like we can't even see them, and there's people flying in that circuit. That's how far away we are. Yeah, you're doing really well, Marvin. <laughs> Shouldn't we also not be listening to Edenvale traffic? I mean, we are. We have a dual watch on oh. this. This thing will listen to that one also. And I have it listening to Edenvale. Oh, that's Edenvale. 12277. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so the 12285 is Collingwood. That's right. And so you can actually you can hear both and talk only on one. And talk. So you can only talk on the one that's on your left side of the radio. Okay. And you can listen to the one on the right if you push this dual button here. Okay. So right now, we're so damn close to Eden Vale, but we're going towards the water here. And this is a gray area, what station to be on. I'm choosing to be on Collingwood because there's a lot more traffic there. Okay. And we're about to enter in where a lot of people fly into Collingwood, which is the water. Gotcha. We can hear Eden Vale if, they, if somebody speaks. And if I need to talk to them, I just push this button brings 122775 gotcha. over there to the left the then left is to the left is what you can talk to that's right okay this is talk and listen this, this is, is just listen, listen only when you hit dual so you're on dual right now aren't you right now it just sh switched off i'm going to switch it back now i'm going to hit dual the little indicator there says dual okay now most aircraft will not have that radio set up it'll just be either on or off right And the airport's at our 3 o'clock or yep. 3.30. Yep. I can't get over nobody flying today. What is it you're holding there? No, oh, I'm just playing. I'm, this is uh, for air ventilation in here. Oh, okay. So if I pull this, it's allowing fresh air to come through these little holes. Oh, okay. I'm just resting my hand on something, though. Gotcha. And then this is hot air. If I pull this, we'll have engine heat come through. I don't think we need that. No, we don't need that. And push is to allow air to be flowing on our feet. Right. 
my climate control. <laughs> cool. Yeah, you got me so comfortable with your flying, I'm just fidgeting here. <laughs> I'm just messing around, I'm, I'm relaxed. That's good. That's a good thing. That's very good. Yeah. That's pretty rare that I come with a first flight with somebody and I don't have to do anything. Well, I think you might have to land. Well, <laughs> yeah, probably. It's going to be rough when we go to land, trust me. I, I figured the turbulence, yeah. yeah. Yeah, once we get down to that 1700 feet, feet. Yeah. the turbulence is going to whack the heck out of us. Yeah. And the wind is still brisk. Like up here, we're spoiled, but it tells and us... Traffic advisory in um, Collingwood, the helicopter Lima Bravo Alpha is on the runway 31 uh, doing some offering work. And, okay, and uh, we're spoiled with this aircraft, but we can see the wind speed here, and it's 21 knots up here. Oh, really? See that corner there? Yes. So it's coming up from us from 304 degrees at yes. 21 knots. That's giving us a crosswind of 18 knots. Right. That's pretty brisk. Now, thankfully, we're not landing in that. The lower we get, the wind's going to get slower. Right. But that's also going to cause more turbulence because it's still brisk and there's heavy thermals. It's not a good day for me to try landing. Well, I will try to get you on it as much as possible. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to get uneasy with it. Sure. Oh, that's fine. I'll let you do the first one. <laughs> Collingwood area traffic. This is uh, Piper Aztec, uh, Foxtrot Whiskey Papa Delta. Um, approximately uh, 10 miles to the south of the field. Um, inbound for the simulated RNAV runway 13 approach. Um, starting the approach in about uh, five minutes, approximately five minutes. Uh, we'll call inbound to uh, Collingwood. And uh, we will just be overshooting and uh, at Collingwood but not be landing. Whiskey Papa Delta, Collingwood area traffic. Check uh, Papa Delta helicopter, uh, Bravo uh, Lima. About uh, 7 to the east, we're westbound, north of field, 2,000 feet. Okay, that, that's pretty cool. Look at the way that Nottawasaga is dumping all of its mud out to the bay. Yes. So here we're going to be doing a different circuit entry because we're on the north side of the field. We have to get our plane to the yeah, south the side, side. Yeah, right. to enter into that downwind right. Right. so we can complete the circuit. I'm oh, going to have to go all the way around. Like. You could do that, but we don't need to. No. Uh, another thing we can do is what we call an overhead the field to enter into the mid-left downwind. Oh, like a crosswind. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're cross it's a crosswind cross, cross, but we cross right in the center of the runway. Okay. So imagine this radio is the runway. Yes. Like there's the light. We're going to go right through the sure. center. See, it. we were on this side before. We could have went like this and entered into the downwind, downwind. to come here to land. Yeah. This way, we're going to come this way and yes. enter into the downwind, into the yes. base, and then final. So let's take the aircraft and start pointing it towards the airport. So it's going to be a right turn. I'll point you in the direction of it and then we'll start descending down to 1,700 feet. Okay. A little bit more to the right. Almost. Right about there. I don't know if you can see it yet. Just barely? There's yeah. a large blue hangar just past yeah. that large forest there. Yeah. 
So what I'm going to have to do now is I have to announce to the world where we are, who we are, and what we're doing. Okay. Hi, Andy DeVille, traffic, Sports Star India, Juliet Kilo Yankees, five miles northeast of the field at 2,000 feet, going to descend to circuit height. Cross overhead the field and join a mid-left downwind for 3-1. Okay, so now we're going to take the plane and we're going to gradually lower it down so you can allow okay. that stick to droop. While you do that, I, you can even ease back on that throttle so we don't start overspeeding going down. And get this plane to 1,700 feet. Very good. Notice how your airspeed hasn't changed? That's perfect. Yeah. You're descending, but your airspeed's the same. Right. That's how we do our landings. We can tr here comes the bumps. Approaching altitude. But as you get to your altitude, you can start adding power again to get us back to that 4600 range. 1700? 1700, yeah, a little bit more. Very nice. Yeah, right around here, give it a little bit of turn to the right, get some of the power on. And I'm sure we're going to start getting hit by all those thermals now. Right. Now, if it was very busy, I would be announcing now that we're a mile north of the field. But since there's nobody here, I'm just going to announce when we're over top of it. So see how we're cutting the runway in half by doing this. That's it. Zero traffic, system two complex, clear the zone of the west, 2,000 feet, switch going to Collingwood. Seeing that you did some correction with your feet, that was good. Once we pass the airport by about three quarters of a mile, we're going to do a left turn to enter the downwind. So I'm just going to make a radio announcement here. Edenville traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankee is overhead. The field to join a mid left downwind. 3 1, full stop. Right here you can start initiating a left turn. We're gonna go 90 degrees in that direction. Edenville traffic, Julia Kilo Yankee turning mid left downwind, 3 1. Very nice. Look at that, beautiful. Just keep the turn coming and maybe start leveling right about here. And if you look to your left, we should be parallel to that runway. We are. Nice. You're climbing up a little bit, so you can reduce yep. your throttle and let the nose come down. This is where it's going to get very busy. Okay. Yeah, it's getting windy too. Alright, so keep that nose back. Got to keep that 1700 feet. Do a left turn here. Left turn? Yep. Approaching altitude. And Edenville traffic, Julia Kilo Yankees turning left base. 3 1, full stop. We're a little bit long, but that's okay. We're a little bit far away, I mean. Gotcha. 
I'll just keep that turn coming to the left. Now, you know what I'll do? I'm going to set you up here because it's going to get too difficult. All right. So I'm just going to take control. I have control. You have control. I'm going to get us where we need to be, and then I want to try to get you on the controls for the landing. Wow, she's gusty, boy. Yeah, you wouldn't have been able to do this landing. Not like that. This is this is challenging, man. I believe you. <laughs> now, if I can just get this air to stabilize a little bit, I would like to give you back some control here, but. And Ada Bill Traffic, Julia, Kilo Yankee is final 3 1, full stop. All right, let's see if I can get this thing going just a touch slower. Laps two? Yeah, number two, 30 degrees. Um, you can try this. Let's get your left hand back on the controls, and if not, just ride through with me. Let's okay. just see. So what I'm doing is I'm controlling our altitude with our, with our engine. I'm going to transfer control of the stick to you to let you feel how heavy it gets. Oh, feel, feel that? Oh, oh it does. Now, right now, what we're trying to do is maintain that 60 to 65. And we're drifting off to the right, so I'm going to give a little pull to the right here. There we go. And the way I'm controlling that airspeed is with the stick either back to slow down or forward to speed up. So now I don't need power anymore because I know we've made this runway. I'm going to get rid of the power. Now we're at full idle. She's sinking quick. Wow. So far, I'm not using the rudders yet. The rudders are going to straighten us up. Okay, we're getting a little slow there. Now I'm going to remove power totally. And right around here, I'm going to start applying a little bit of left rudder just to straighten that nose up. And just kind of still trying to fly the aircraft. See how yes. we're still airborne? Yeah. Okay, yes. I want the plane to stop when it wants to stop. I don't want to force it on the ground, or that's when pilots have problems. And now you can feel it's just getting really safe feeling, like we're on the ground now. Yes. It's planted. I find when pilots try to force it on the ground, that's when the plane will pop up and surprise you and end up sideways. So if you always fly it like you're trying to still fly, exactly. then you're always set up to be safe. So if you want to try this ground stuff a little bit, I'm just going to get rid of these flaps because I don't want it to take off. And I want you to feel what's going on with the pedals. I got the, the throttles at idle, and we're just kind of rolling along and let you feel the left push of the pedal, right push, just play around with it, see what it does. Now we're going to be turning off this way, so you can try doing that. Very nice. Edenville traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankee down and clear active 3 1, backtracking 2 6 to the ramp. So you can also lift your feet up a little bit so you can touch those brakes just to feel what they feel like. You want to try to push them simultaneously because they are independent brakes. It's almost like you got to stand on your tiptoes like that. Kind of just... Oh, there they are. Okay. And we'll exit off this little guy here. Okay. We do it. Very nice. When we get close to the hangars here, I'll take it because you have control. Have control. Yep. Yeah, the ground handling gets a little challenging. You're going to get it probably within three hours. But I even notice some people that have 15 hours, you'll have a brain fart and push the wrong direction. <laughs> I've seen it many times.
But it doesn't let you get away with it for long, so. That was fantastic. Really well, I'm good. glad you liked it. Yep. Well, you, you did very, very well. You saw I only flew the landing, good. right? Take off and landing. Now the same thing, that little checklist has a little shutdown list. Uh, yeah, there we go. So, uh, shutdown. So we're making sure the throttle's at idle. And you can feel there that where it stops. Turn to the left and it yeah. stops. That's idle. Right. Okay, so throttle's at idle. Yep. Ignition, we're going to turn the key off. So you can try that. It's going to go click, click, off. Engine speed. There you go. Oil pressure. Strobe and navigation lights. I'll let you try that. Radio is up here. That knob turns all the way until it clicks. That's it. 